If your creative push has helped you, you can help the show by becoming a patron on Patreon. For $20, $10, $5, or $1 a month, you can not only show your support of the podcast, but also do so much to help to cover all the costs. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash Patreon to find out all of the goodies that you can get when you become a patron at each of the levels, and thank you in advance for helping the show. Your Creative Push, episode 214. Tell them that it does inspire you and it does, you know, push you to become that person that you might become that one day. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is David Luong. David has been working in the visual effects industry professionally since 2005. He's currently a senior cinematics artist, too, at Blizzard Entertainment, doing lighting, compositing, and digital matte painting for Blizzard Cinematics on games such as Diablo 3, StarCraft 2, World of Warcraft, Heroes of the Storm, and Overwatch. He has previously worked on films such as Night of the Museum, Superman Returns, and Underworld Evolution at Rhythm and Hughes, Luma Pictures, and Disney Toon Studios. David also teaches for CG Master Academy, and he has his own art gallery, Photonic Playground. David, man, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, of course. Uh, I can't wait to get into all those different things that you do <laughs> and how you find the time and energy uh, to yeah, do it all. I um, can't believe it either. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before we do, uh, maybe could you just give uh, the listeners a kind of a brief rundown on how you got to the point you are today in your creative career? Yeah. Um, so I actually kind of self-taught myself Photoshop uh, during high school. Um, that's kind of when the advent of Photoshop kind of came about in the 90s. And uh, mm. it was um, just a period where I was kind of exploring my creativity. And I was in journalism class. I was starting out as a reporter there. Then slowly, I got more interested in Photoshop and graphic design. And so I got myself um, to be an editor at the, the newspaper. And so I did a lot of graphics using Photoshop, just kind of learned whatever I could through books or whatever internet was back in the day in the 90s, <laughs> yeah. AOL, uh, <laughs> right. finding whatever knowledge I could out there. And then I uh, slowly worked my way up as um, the website editor. And so I kind of put together the whole website for um, the North Star newspaper in um, Riverside. And uh, yeah, it was pretty fun to do that. Um, learned a bunch of things doing that. And then that kind of sparked my interest of doing um, more graphics work and 3D animation work um, as far as computer stuff related. Hmm. Uh, after that, I kind of went to college. Then um, there's a place called UC Riverside. Um, I went there for about two years. I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do for sure because I was going to be I was being pressured by my family to kind of do like um, the medical field. You know, very typical Asian family. Uh, <laughs> a real job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just do dentistry or doctor. You know, kind of thing. You know, you'll make a lot of money and you'll be happy. Mm. So I'm like, no, nah, that's not me. Mm. So. Uh, after two years of just kind of thinking about it, I'm like, no, I really want to go to an art school. And so I applied myself um, to a bunch of art colleges and um, found that uh, the Academy of Art University in San Francisco was the one that fit me the most. So I went there in 2001 and um, did all my foundations for art, uh, kind of like figure drawing, uh, modeling, um, perspective, anatomy, all that stuff. And then the last two years was all about uh, computer animation and computer um, software 3D modeling, um, texturing, lighting, etc. And uh, graduated in 2005. And from there, I went on to do a small stint at Disney Toon Studios, uh, working on Tinkerbell, and then um, went over to Luma Pictures and worked on uh, Unreal, Unreal Evolution there um, for about six months. And then from there, um, I applied to Rhythm and Hughes, uh, got into the compositing apprenticeship there, and just had a blast there. I worked on Garfield 2 there, Superman Returns, uh, Night at the Museum, and just learned so much there. Um, there were, there were like veterans of the industry there, for like, you know, 20 years plus, and they've won Oscars at that studio. It's just, it's just an amazing place to be. And I'm so lucky to have worked there. But after probably about a year, they kind of ran out of projects to work on. And so they're like, Oh yeah, uh, just go on unemployment and they come back in March. This was, uh, October. So I'm like, I, <laughs> I can't do that for that long. That's, that's a long time. I've got a lot of student loans and bills and all that. Yeah. So unfortunately, yeah, um, I started searching for other places and uh, really wanted to work at my dream studios. I had two dreams that I really wanted to work at. It was either Weta Digital in New Zealand. All their Lord of the Rings movies really inspired me when I was going through school. And I, I'm a huge fantasy geek. Um, so mm -hmm. it was either that or um, 
Blizzard Entertainment in Irvine. And growing up, I've played so many Blizzard games, um, starting out uh, Warcraft 2 back in 1994. And then played a lot of uh, StarCraft, Warcraft 3, um, World of Warcraft, uh, a little bit of Diablo, didn't get too much into that. But just watching the cinematics as I'm playing the games and all the storytelling involved with that really, really inspired me um, to go into visual effects and 3D animation. So I applied there and um, I got in in 2006. And so I've been there ever since. And it's been a blast. <laughs> Almost 10 years, uh, 10 and a half years now, actually. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. And for people who don't play video games or, <laughs> you know, who aren't mm. like aware, Blizzard is like, like kind of the pinnacle, right? Yeah, like that's like what a lot is. of a lot of young people have as their kind of dream. I think people, uh, guests that I've had on the podcast before, you know, talk okay. about, you know, oh, it'd be amazing to work for Blizzard. So <laughs> yeah. does it feel, does it feel like that to you? Like to be like at like kind of a pinnacle, like, you know, starting out, you know, self-taught, uh, which is awesome. And I think that's super inspirational also for young people, you know, you can yeah. teach yourself, like don't wait for any other opportunity to come mm-hmm. just teach yourself and just t- keep taking those steps like you took. Um, right. th- does it feel like you're at the pinnacle though? I do. And it's kind of uh, scary that I got there so quickly because I wanted to try a lot of other <laughs> studios. I'm like, Oh, I'll get to Blizzard someday or Weta someday. And uh, I got there and I've been there ever since, but yeah, it's, it was pretty much like um, to me, it's like the Pixar for video games. And so Every single game that we released mm. was pretty much AAA. And, uh, you know, we had Warcraft, um, World of Warcraft, uh, Starcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone, Overwatch, um, Heroes of the Storm. Um, every single one of them, they're, they've just been a huge hit all around the world. And so I've been very thankful to being there that long and getting in so early. Yeah, even the, not just the games, but the cinematics, which is where, um, I am in the department of. And, uh, it's, same thing. It's it's like the Pixar of cinematics too. Um, everything about the the department that I am in is just all about quality. It's all about storytelling and supporting that. And uh, we don't take very many shortcuts at all. So it's like every single frame that you stop on on the cinematic has been um, Could really, be like, really yeah polished. And it's it's yeah. a poster frame in itself. Every single frame, pretty much. Yeah, totally. I know that. Like for me, I I remember playing rpgs especially yeah. like, i'm talking like original playstation like final fantasy 7 yep and just I like that. yeah you'd be playing the game and then like the playstation would like make this like little like noise and you know that a cinematic <laughs> was coming up, up and it was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you just get like super excited and it was like like yeah. dessert or i don't know i don't know what to call it's like a reward after you're playing and it's it's really fun because it's, it supports a story and supports everything that you're playing you're like oh i get to finally see the cinematic after all this you know 10 hours of playing a dungeon or whatever right 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 it's like all your hard work has has paid off for this you know one minute cinematic or whatever (laughs) so do you do you feel like you're part of the game uh itself or like do you kind of feel like you're separate like you're like the like that kind of reward (laughs) system of the game yeah so kind of like stuck in between two worlds because uh we are in a game company but we're also doing uh film visual effects at the same time so we're not really film either but we're not really Mm -hmm. in the game side but we're kind of filling in between um supporting kind of both so uh, I do feel a part of the game as well, um, but not. We don't actually like um, you know change too much of the game. Uh, we might have sometimes that you know a boss might have a certain ability in the cinematic, but not necessarily in the game. So a lot of fans get you know uh, upset about that. They're like, why why doesn't the boss have this ability like that right, cinematic? Right. It's really cool. But we have some uh, you know artistic liberties uh, doing the cinematic stuff. But I do feel probably fifty fifty in the gaming world and the film world in that aspect. I think. Gotcha. Yeah. Like I was saying, like playing Final Fantasy seven. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember watching this, this cinematics there and being like, all right, this is it. Like they're never going to be <laughs> able to like get, do anything better than this. Uh, yeah. and I guess. <laughs> so they have obviously topped it. And right. is there, do you think that there is like a point of singularity where it's just like, you can't get better? Or do you think there's always going to be kind of improvements until it's like exactly like real life? Yeah. Uh, looking back just in film, just to compare to um, probably the pinnacle or one of the best visual effects that I think still to this day is Jurassic Park in nineteen eighty four. Oh, I have this written down. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? So uh, back in the day, like ILM did such wonderful work, and they've done, done a lot of groundbreaking work. And a lot of movies are still trying to catch up to that look that ILM established in nineteen eighty four. Uh, that movie, Terminator Two. Uh, I mean, not all the visual effects shots are going to be up to date. Still, you kind of see some of them are kind of a uh, old and dated, not so good anymore. But some of the shots actually hold up very well, so and very realistic. Um, so there are times when uh, uh, I do think that we will hit that pinnacle and we've kind of hit it for some certain aspects, uh, but real life, um, I think people is still kind of hard, the uncanny valley, um, 
but I think mm-hmm. most recently in the movie uh, Logan, I don't know if a lot of people have seen it, but uh, there's some super realistic effects in there. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, you can't even tell. So, um, yeah. yeah, there there are times that uh, we are catching up and I don't think we can go beyond that, but there's a lot of other things that we still need to tackle. Um, like uh, there's a lot of like weather effects. Uh, sometimes water is still a challenge. Uh, fire is pretty done, I think. Yeah, fire is pretty well now. Um, so it's really just kind of humans and uh, uh, some of the environment effects, I think. Uh, but other than that, yeah, we are getting there. Uh, and yeah. for us as cinematics team, we're still catching up to certain things because we're very, uh, very stylistic. It's it's not really re- realistic stuff that we do. We do a lot of hyper real um, effects, and so um, for us, it's it's still we're still catching up, which is great because um, we haven't really stagnated in that aspect. I think. Yeah, always something to kind of strive for too. Yeah. As a writer, one of my uh, professors told me that uh, once you're like a writer, you can't read as anything, but like you can't read as a reader. You, uh, you're just yeah. like analyzing what, what the writer's trying to do or, mm-hmm. or being jealous of what they, <laughs> they've accomplished. Is, yeah. is that the same with you? Like when you look at other cinematics or even kind of your own, like that you can almost like kind of the magic gets ruined a little mm-hmm. bit, if that makes sense? Yeah. I kind of watch movies twice if I can. So the first time, I'm kind of judgmental. Uh, a lot of the effects that come on, I'm like, what What are they thinking? What is that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second time, I'm just like, oh, you know, if it was fun the first time, I don't really care. Um, I'm just going to enjoy it for the story or whatever. Um, but I do have that part of the brain where it's always kind of on and I'm looking for certain mistakes <laughs> or mm-hmm. certain things that they could do better in visual effects. But I, I can turn that off at times. Uh, but for the most part, it's it's mostly on. So it is kind of uh, spoiled for me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you find that some of your own work, like after 10 years working there, like yeah. you look back at your old work and you're like, damn, like I, uh, mis- uh, <laughs> I made a mis- mistake there or, or stuff yeah, like that? Yeah, all the time. So I'm like, I don't really want to look at the old stuff anymore. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's hard, um, especially uh, working at Blizzard for so long. But um, yeah, it's I, I've been trying to get back to more personal work. It's been uh, pretty crazy for me recently, but um, I'm helping out with indie projects with a director called Eric Zaragoza, and he's doing this short film called Starian. And so I'm doing some map painting supervision for that, and I'm doing some map paintings for myself for that too. So that's kind of my outlet for personal work right now. So um, it's been years, though. It's it's hard to work eight hours and then come home and then do more work on top of that. But um, I've been doing that for the art gallery to myself. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, an interesting thing to look back on your work that's been you know pretty old. And, yeah <laughs> critique it to death yeah well i think that's inspirational for people because i, I that you know it's it also means that you're improving too like that you're, yeah you know it's 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 nice to look back and to see that improvement so that mm-hmm. it kind of spurs you forward and knowing that like the, what you're creating today might also be looked back upon by you 10 years from now and, and just be like oh i had a lot to learn <laughs> yeah although i i really wish i could get to that one point like Jurassic park i'm like oh yeah this is like 20 years later it still looks awesome yeah that would be fun <laughs> but for yeah. the most part right now, I'm looking back like, ah, no, it could be better. <laughs> well, uh, my wife actually took me for my birthday. To- Jurassic Park is my favorite movie by oh, far. Wow. Like, it just crushes awesome. everything else. So she took me, she rented a theater. Oh, wow. And it was just the two of us <laughs> to see oh, that so. on the big screen. And it <laughs> it's just, like, perfect. Like, I, you're right. They, wow. It holds up so well. Yeah. Um, Steven Spielberg with ILM, just everything, all the actors and everything. Yeah. John yeah, Williams absolutely. score. Ugh. You can't get better. Just no. maybe... Uh, you know, even Jeff Goldblum, he's all right. Yeah, no, he's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, he's great. Um, love him. So, did you, what did you think about the Jurassic World? The, the um, one? I liked it. I thought it was liked fun. It. Yeah, similar. Kind of like, oh, it's fun. Yeah, yeah it's fun. And they, I, I guess they're going to make a sequel to it. I don't know how, but. I think so, you know. yeah. Interesting. They're always well, going th- back. What did you think of the uh, effects? Uh, the effects are pretty good for the most part. Um, there are some parts where I, I didn't think that, I think they kind of overuse some of it too much. Uh, they yeah. reveal too much of the monster in which, um, Jurassic Park, the first one, they, they kind of showed snippets here and there, but they didn't really show a lot of the creatures until the very end, which kind of holds, um, kind of more mysterious kind of look to it. But for Jurassic World, it's, it's everywhere. So it's kind of, uh, it lost a little bit of its magic, I think. Right, it's that uh that idea of not showing the monster. Uh, that's why Signs is one of my favorite movies because they don't yeah. even show the aliens to, until Ugh. like the end. Right, yeah. Everybody it's... makes fun of me because it's like one of the only movies that ever scared me. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like terrified watching that movie for some oh, reason. Oh man, yeah. it's a good one. Really love the one. 
Um, so t- talking more about your personal work and that idea of working eight hours, because a lot of people listening do have a full time job, sometimes not even in any kind of creative field. Mm-hmm. How do you then find the, I guess, the <laughs> the extra gas in the tank to kind of go forward with your personal work when you are kind of burnt out after getting home from a, from a full day of doing work? Yeah. So uh, sometimes I just kind of uh, immerse myself in a lot of creativity just uh, around me, like usually music. Um, if I'm listening to a lot of soundtrack music, um, it really gets my imagination going. Um, I love to listen to film soundtracks or game soundtracks, and uh, they, they're they very vivid in a lot of their storytelling itself just through music notes. And also just watching a lot of movies and uh, just watching a lot of TV shows that have visual effects or certain things like Game of Thrones, just awesome um, mm-hmm. example. Um, I would come back and like, yeah, I, I really want to do something like that myself and just kind of going out there and executing it. So after working eight hours a day, it is it is hard, especially when you just want to go home and kind of uh, rest and just kind of hang out. But I do come home and also video games really help too. So I either play video games sometimes during break at work or coming home playing a little bit and then just opening up Photoshop and just starting uh, you know some new project. And I don't have to finish it. I just start a little bit here and there couple hours and then work my way up. Um, sometimes it takes months, sometimes even years, actually. Um, mm-hmm. So it takes a while. Um, but I think just slowly tinkering away at it, even though, um, you know, you won't finish it. Just, you know, a couple hours here and there is the way to do it. Um, you don't have to over, um, kind of overwhelm yourself too much, I think. So just work at it whenever you can. Yeah. And the trick is not to get sucked into the video games once you turn that on mm. <laughs> to like, I don't know, set a I timer know. or something so that you do. I think you're right. Getting started is, is sometimes the hardest thing to do. But like once yeah. you're like kind of your butts in the chair and you, you've you got that inspiration going, then right. then it's then it's easier. Yeah. I, I mean, I just got the Nintendo Switch and the Breath of the Wild. Oh, no. Legend of Zelda. I know. So uh, I know that's going to be like hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, getting sucked into that game. But I'm going to have to be careful and <laughs> just play here and there. I mean, I just got it last night, so it's totally new. Um, I played probably only like an hour or two because I know it's going to be crazy uh, later on. And you can play it everywhere because it's portable. So that's the other dangerous thing. Um, but I, I'm stopping myself you know, <laughs> enough to, to do other things at least. So luckily, I could do that. Dude, I'm. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time today. Then, if you just got oh, it last yeah. night. <laughs> oh man, I, it's it's crazy. I know. I definitely want to play it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, a lot of people are getting sucked into that one. I know. Oh, so good. Just beautiful graphics and uh, the open world gameplay. Man, it's a lot of exploration. Yeah, yeah and I hear that they. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I hear that they just don't make it like super easy for you as well. No, they kind of really just hard. like they trust they trust you to figure it out <laughs> yeah. eventually or master it. There's like hardly any tutorials. Uh, you're walking around, you just have to figure things out. And then the monsters are like super hard. They, they chase you way far away and you have no weapons. So you basically just have to either run away or use like a stick that breaks after like two hits. So mm. it's really hard. Um, there's a bunch of puzzles you have to figure out. And yeah, just lots of running around and enjoying the world, I think. so. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Well, good luck to you on your journey. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with, with the personal work, and then I know that's hard to get to. And then on top of that, mm-hmm. you started a gallery. So can, yeah. can you oh. talk about uh, Photonic Playground? Yeah, so that started about uh, two and a half years ago. Uh, me and my husband, when we bought this loft in downtown Santa Ana, it was um, to be used as an art gallery. We, we kind of figured like I worked in Irvine or I work in Irvine at Blizzard. And we also lived in Irvine. And it's, uh, it's a very nice city. It's um, kind of like master plan and everything's clean. There's like... Um, no homeless people. They kind of, mm-hmm. it's weird. They take them out and they drive them to the next city and drop them off, which is odd. Um, <laughs> for, oh, like, for real? Yeah, they do. It's crazy. The oh, cops wow. do that. I know. And then there's like no graffiti. There's like no trashed. No, crime is like the lowest rate in the nation. So they really take care of the city. But the flip side of that is that it's super boring. There's no nightlife. <laughs> there's no culture. There's hardly any art. And so we wanted to move to a different place nearby Irvine. Um, so we can still drive to work easily. We picked downtown Santa Ana because it's only 20 minutes away, and there's a wealth of just culture here. Um, every first Saturday of the month is an art walk here. And so a lot of people who have galleries, they open up their place, and they invite people in and just kind of show either their own artwork or other people's artwork. And um, I kind of thought that, hey, we should do that for our own place. And so um, in August of 2014, uh, after about four months of preparing the loft, uh, we opened up with my own artwork as the grand opening. And that was a pretty good success. And then um, since then, I've been doing 
uh, new artists and featuring other artists locally um, from Blizzard or Riot Games or anywhere else um, near our place. You know, every two months is a new exhibition. And so it's been a blast so far, but it's a lot of work. I mean, I feel like a producer. Um, I feel like um, <laughs> I kind of understand why producers are kind of crazy at arts. Like, why don't you have your artwork in? And you're supposed to be, uh, you know, putting up your artwork at this time. And it's totally last minute. And it's a lot of stress. But at the end of the day, I think when it opens up and a lot of fans come in and a lot of people um, enjoy uh, the exhibition and the art, um, I think it's all worth it. And um, I'm thankful to have a very understanding uh, husband too, my husband Steve. He is an admirer of art as well, and he loves doing art. He is the uh, senior admin to the World of Warcraft team. And so... Oh, so you guys work together? Kind of. He works on uh, the World of Warcraft team. I work on the cinematics team. We're in different buildings. So different departments, yeah. yeah. Um, but we work at the same company. And so um, mm-hmm. kind of nice that uh, we kind of pool our networking uh, together to get different um, artist talents and uh, people coming in. So um, yeah, he is a great host. And I host the bottom downstairs and he does upstairs. And we have a blast just having that party. It's a lot of work. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of worth it, in it I think. That's very cool. And are there many other opportunities for people like uh, digital artists to like showcase their work in, in galleries like that? Yeah, so it's pretty unique. Uh, in Santa Ana, we're pretty much the only one that deals with entertainment art, uh, digital art, especially. Mm-hmm. The other place would be Nomen in um, Los Angeles. But LA has a lot of art places, a lot, a lot of art galleries. Uh, but for us, we're pretty unique in that we're pretty much the only one in Orange County that I know of that, that do this. So um, a lot of people from LA and Orange County come and visit our place. Um, so we're pretty happy about that. But yeah, I, I think it's a lost opportunity to not have more digital artists out there kind of being represented in a physical space. That's kind of our theme of the show or the exhibition, I mean. And uh, I, we're just kind of uh, happy to have that outlet for a lot of artists out there. Yeah, it's a definitely probably a unique opportunity for people to be like, hey, I've spent so much time working yeah. on this thing. And, and like you said, each you know frame of one of your cinematics could be like a potential gallery piece you know what i mean uh-huh, it's just so yeah. so polished like that so like the, to be able to kind of do that and, and put it up on the wall like it yeah. makes you feel like i don't want to say like not not that you wouldn't feel like a real artist but like <laughs> that you know you can you can have that experience was, was yeah. that difficult for you you said you put your own artwork up the first time was there I, was I that scary for you to do it was scary too because like i'm putting up artwork that's kind of older or uh-huh. some even artwork like that I started as a student too. And so I'm like, crap, uh, is this good enough? You know, you start like, kind of self doubt on yourself. <laughs> you're like, your confidence level gets low. But when you think about it and you think about the work that you've done, you're like, oh yeah, this, this might be okay. It'd be okay. And you've heard other people in the past liking this piece. You're like, okay, maybe it's good. And so you print it up and you see it physically for the first time. You're like, wow, this is looking pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And that feeling that you get as an artist, um, seeing your digital work in the physical realm, it's, very transforming. I mean, I've seen a lot of um, very uh, prolific artists in our gallery, and we print up their artwork. They see it for the first time on the fine art paper, and they're like, wow, this looks awesome. <laughs> and uh, when they put it up on the frame, on the wall, it, it's a different feeling than seeing it just on your computer screen. So it's um, it's a great place to showcase your own artwork and have other people appreciate your artwork in a different medium rather than digital medium. And uh, I think it does transcend um, the computer realm on our. Um, it looks a little bit more, uh, I guess, fine art, you would say, traditional, mm-hmm. on the paper, on the monitor, that kind of grabs a lot of people's attention. And the fact that someone might actually buy that piece or they've bought the piece that you put up, it's just super gratifying. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And not just like being able to like see it, not on a computer screen, like a glowing computer screen, but like mm-hmm. the, just the also just knowing that it's like something that's physical, like yeah. you've created this thing and here mm-hmm. it is and you can actually like pick it up and take it with you. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yeah, something about have the physical realm of it, the, the tactile nature of paper and you see your art went there. It's it's a lot different. It's a, it's a nice feeling to have actually. So Sometimes you're just toiling away on digital layers and like all these files and they just get tucked away in the hard drive and you never see them again. It's kind mm-hmm. of sad, but when you actually have them up on the wall and this, you know, big space, um, and people enjoy it too, it's, it's very gratifying. Absolutely. That's so cool. Yeah. And I know that you create posters for marketing as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. I did do some of that. Yeah. And so what is that like? How is that experience different than creating the, the, the actual elements of the cinematic, uh, movies? The cinematic frame is kind of a basis of the marketing uh, stills, but working on the marketing uh, posters and the images, it's uh, it's a different level because um, not just that 
people don't you know they don't just play the game and you, they they see your cinematic but it's gonna be everywhere it's gonna be like on game boxes or like market materials all around the world um one time i did a poster for starcraft 2 wings of liberty uh the Raynar poster um that was actually on a 747 on a south korean air jet so what? Yeah, they, <laughs> i show you the video actually they put together a video of them uh pissing the images onto the airplane oh my god <laughs> oh dude we'll have that linked that up just, then in the show notes yeah. page totally unreal i'm like oh my god they're doing that and they're flying around with that thing um yeah i wish they could just keep that airplane the way it is and never remove that art piece but they had to for other oh, no. advertisements yeah um so that was just a huge honor um just seeing that uh, on a jet or like sometimes they print it like a on a big billboard or um on the side of a building um it's just overwhelming you're like oh my god i i had a, a hand in this you know and it's not just me um it's it's teamwork too i've got like a lot of other people who did the models uh some people did the texturing um i do kind of like the end part of the work we're just like a chef gathering all the ingredients and uh, kind of mm. creating the dish so i get like a little pepper here from this artist a little salt there from another this artist and uh just kind of uh put together bake it and then get the end result and hopefully uh the director the art director approves of it if not then i get a bunch of notes and iterations that i've got to do and then send it out to the world. So, have you ever had like a a, a time where like you've done a lot of work and then they're like, nope, <laughs> and oh, then you have man. to do it again? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, that's that's always the pain. Um, putting yourself out there as an artist. Um, that's just kind of part of the job. And sometimes it's disheartening, but then you have to sit back and realize that this is not really your work. I mean, you have had a hand in it, but it it's a collective kind of thing that everyone kind of owns. Um, not just you, but the company, etc. Uh, a bunch of other people that had their hand in it too. So. Yeah, you just kind of have to be a little bit more detached when you're working on professional work and just kind of uh, do what they say because <laughs> they're kind of paying right. you to do it too. Um, and yeah, it's fun, but at the same time, it can be uh, a little frustrating at times. But yeah, it's all worth it in the end, I think. Yeah, and I guess that's one of the fr- yeah frustrations of working with a team. But at yeah. the same time, like you wouldn't be able to create. How many people are in the department there? Isn't like 200 or 300? Yeah, we got about 300 now altogether. Uh, so, That's a like lot the, just the amount of people that it takes to, to create something like that. It must be so cool to be a part of it. Yeah, I mean, we're working on just not just one cinematic at the same time, but it's it's multiple cinematics. So that's why we have so many people. And we've got people from like support, programming, producers, artists, uh, you know, directors, art directors, so many people that kind of get their heads together and uh, create this, you know, piece, visual piece for the game and the world to enjoy. Yeah, and it all comes together so well because I think the other night I spent t- probably an hour and a half watching, I think, oh, every man. trailer for <laughs> every game that Blizzard has made. Oh, Was that on YouTube? Like just a cinematic of everything? Yeah. Someone cut it. Cut yeah. It yeah. <laughs> but it's so good, though. I know. That's it's awesome to do that. It's really, really nice. <laughs> or sometimes they yeah. do that for uh, individual games or like, you know, it's a lot of spoilers. So they say, spoilers ahead. Don't watch this unless you right, right. don't care or play the game. <laughs> Right, which ruins the pro- the whole process of playing a game, yeah, I guess. But, yeah. um, so before we let you go, would you have any advice for like uh, somebody who's younger or just starting out in your field or really any field uh, yeah. as an artist and perhaps they are uh, teaching themselves like, like you did, mm-hmm. perhaps they can't afford to go to school. Would you have any advice for them to kind of start their journey? Yeah, so this day and age, uh, the internet is just an amazing tool and resource out there. Uh, Everything is kind of free, and there's a lot of artists who like want to share their techniques, um, and they would give you feedback for free too. Uh, just don't bug them a lot. <laughs> just kind of give them time, uh, email them, um, ask them, you know, hey, what do you think about this? Just kind of reach out to the artists. Uh, sometimes they do answer you, and you'll get that feedback that you really need to kind of improve your artwork or um, whatever that you're working on. I would go to websites like uh, artstation.com, uh, cgtalk.com. Those are just great inspirational places where there's a lot of knowledge out there. A lot of great visual um, images out there that you can compare your work to and uh, a lot of professionals that you can um, reach out to and just say hi and uh, ask for feedback if they allow it. So I think I, that's the biggest thing for me to tell anyone up and coming, coming out to working in this industry is to just comb the internet for uh, really what you really want to do. Uh, sometimes it's like animation or uh, sometimes illustration, concept art, 3D modeling, there's just a huge resource out there. Uh, Gumroad is huge these days. Mm. Uh, Patreon also. I know those are kind of paid, but uh, there's a bunch of other resources out there that it's free. And uh, I think places like CG Talk has a huge forum out there. There's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, posts on like every single piece of software out there. You know, just kind of like a Q&A uh, for different artists out there too. 
So lots of free information. Yeah, I would tell them to dig up uh, the internet, really, and kind of enjoy that process because sometimes it is pretty fun finding these nuggets and treasures out there. Absolutely. And cgsociety.org, you uh, have a course there or do you have multiple courses there? Yeah. So uh, CGMA, which is uh, CG Master Academy, they actually uh, bought out CG Society now. So I'm actually under the CGMA banner. Um, okay. I'm teaching uh, intro to digital map painting on there. Um, I'm taking a break right now, so I won't be teaching again in the summer, um, but I hope to be doing that soon. I think it's going to be like July or something. Um, it's an eight-week course on digital map painting, and I kind of teach everyone just going through Photoshop and gathering reference materials and um, shooting their photography plates and putting it together into a realistic environment that they kind of um, concept out. And so that's always fun, and I've been teaching it for almost eight years now. It's been a long time. So... Um, yeah, it's it's always a blast to figure out, uh, you know, in the class who who's going to be the next big potential inspirational artist out there. And I do get a lot of uh, artists going through my workshop that become the next big thing. And so I'm kind of thankful to help them just a little bit, nudge them in the right direction. Um, but yeah, it's it's been fun. Very cool. Uh, so we'll have that linked up too that yeah, people can, can check that out. And I hear you have a, a talk coming up. Yeah, so um, I've got a talk at the end of May, early June called IFCC, and that's the Independent Festival of Creative Communication. And um, I'm doing um, kind of like the history of digital or map painting, how it transitioned into digital map painting, and how it all supports the story at the same time. So um, it's actually uh, a lecture that I've done almost about two years ago. Um, the first time I've done it was in Vienna and Austria about uh, 2015. And then I did it again in Malmo, Sweden, and again in Mexico. So this would be the fourth time doing it. And each time I get better at doing it and um, I edit my presentation. Um, and so hopefully everyone and the audience in Croatia will be enjoying my presentation. Very cool. I, I know for a fact we have listeners in Croatia uh, based oh, on cool. the stats. So uh, <laughs> awesome. shout out. Go go see yeah. the talk. Is there, um, do you get nervous about like talks like that? I always get nervous. I do. Um, um, it, it's the preparing, the anticipation going up there. But once I'm up there, I'm okay which is um, kind of a thrilling thing, uh, seeing the audience and just going with the presentation. But yeah, it's it's always fun to kind of think of new ways of uh, presenting it and changing it based on the audience or um, from the feedback previously. And so um, I'm going to have a fun time in Croatia and hopefully whoever is out in Croatia, come to IFCC and hopefully I'll see you there. Very cool. And before we let you go, it's time for the what I call the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best final words of advice and really push them to pursue their creative passions. I would say, um, you know, a lot of my parents, my siblings or my friends, whenever I played video games, uh, they really discouraged it. But there's a time when you play video games or, uh, you know, anything that you're really into, like books or movies or whatever. Tell them that it does inspire you and it does, you know, push you to become that person that you might become that one day. And so for me, playing it a lot of like uh, Nintendo games back in the day, uh, a lot of like computer games like EverQuest and uh, World of Warcraft really got to uh, get to where I am today uh, as a video game um, cinematic artist. And so don't get sucked in too much. Um, play in moderation, of course. And uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the trap that a lot of people get into when they play um, in video games or anything else, uh, they might get too addicted to something. Try to not get addicted, but play in moderation and get enough of that just to get the inspiration to push you to become the artist that you might become. Love it, man. Dude, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. And you can find David on his website at davidluong.net. That's D-A-V-I-D-L-U-O-N-G net and photonicplayground.com is the gallery to check that out yeah you can find them pretty much everywhere else as acto a c k d o h i will have everything linked up at today's show notes page at your creative push.com slash david luong david thanks again thanks again man oh man such good stuff you know after the interview i was thinking a lot about photonic playground david's gallery and the idea of seeing your work in the physical realm and I think that's so inspiring, the idea of finding a way to get your work into a different realm. Uh, if you're a digital artist, you know, print that out and hang it up, frame it, uh, admire it, and even sell it. But this idea of getting your, your art or your creativity into a different kind of atmosphere, a different realm, as we said, applies to everyone. You know, if you're a writer, get published. 
I know for me, this was a huge thing um, and a, really a proud moment for me the first time I got published. Um, and it wasn't really th- that big of a deal either. It was just a literary, a, a small literary magazine, but it was so cool to get a physical copy of it and to flip to that page and to see your name there. And for writers, there's so many ways to get published. You don't really have to reach out to the biggest uh, magazines or books or publishers. Uh, there's so many ways to to get your stuff out there, even if it is kind of digitally on a different website to see your words on the Huffington Post or your words published as a guest post on a different blog that you might love. There's so many ways to do it, but it's just the act of putting yourself out there. And it actually um, does take work to make that happen, to reach out to the proper channels. So don't let that hold you back. Uh, if you're a musician, uh, mess around with some video editing software or something. Make a make a music video for one of your songs uh, with some cool clips uh, that inspire you to to kind of bring life and a, and a story to your song. Or if you're a painter, on the flip side, take a video of you painting and turn it into a, a time lapse and put your favorite song to it. You see what I'm saying? You're already a creative person, so be creative in finding ways to branch off and and add life to the art that you're already doing to bring it into another realm like David does for artists with his gallery. It can be so inspiring and kind of um, self-encouraging. You know, you, you do this thing and sometimes you do it so often and for so long and you're so close to it that it doesn't really seem real anymore and by adding life and and depth to it in new ways, you can snap out of that blasé attitude that you might have. And by seeing it in in a new way with new dimensions to it, it can be really shocking. You're like, oh, I made that. And to see it in a new light like that and to really kind of re-inspire yourself in that way, who knows uh, where else that could lead. So something to really think about this weekend uh, to try to find creative ways to go into that new dimension, that new realm even if it is just as simple as printing it out and hanging it up. So really great stuff from David and super cool to talk to him and make sure that if you are in Croatia to check him out at IFCC, a ton of talented artists will be there, uh, including Mike Azevedo, who has been on this show before. Uh, and we'll have details linked up at the show notes page today at yourcreativepush.com slash 214. On Monday's show, we have Audra Auclair. Audra is a super talented artist who also has a really inspiring YouTube channel, uh, which is the way that I found her. If you want to learn more about her or check out her artwork uh, beforehand, you can find her at her website, which is audraauclair.com. That's A-U-D-R-A-A-U-C-L-A-I-R.com. Or just search for her name on YouTube or head to the show notes page. Uh, We'll have everything linked up in today's show notes page, yourcreativepush.com slash 214. Uh, But that's all I've got for you today. Hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done. Have a wonderful, productive weekend. Bring your artwork into that other realm. And we will see you on Monday if you need the push again. I love you all. And we will see you then. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.